What up, everybody? You're now tuned into Fanatic. I'm your host, Brandon Lampley, and we're back again today with another live stream. Um, didn't do sports last week, so I thought about doing it. I was like, nah, I'll, I'll wait. Those stories is coming out. I said I want to wait and see, and I really like to wait and see uh, when stories break. Um, like the ones we're going to talk about is other pundits, other platforms, other uh, reporters, sportscasters, you know, talk about it, see their takes on it. Because I already know what my take is going to be once I see it. And then I see everybody else takes and, you know, I kind of come to I'll come to my own conclusion to see how everybody's taking it. And one of the, this take about Shikari Richardson, um, who won't be participating in the Olympics because uh, she violated anti-doping rules. She tested uh, positive for marijuana. Um, I just saw the groundswell of support that she got, um, which um, part of it, I think, too, is her owning it the way she did. Um, her interview she did, she did own it. Um, you know, although she did say, you know, she had dealt with losing her mother. Some people kind of bite back against that because they're saying that she didn't have much of a relationship with her mother. But regardless of her relationship with her mother, that's a mother. I mean. You get you can you know not know her that well. You can hate her guts, but at the end of the day, your mother is your mother. Um, so I will never question that and how that affected her. Um, but I will say that um, in this entire ordeal, the thing that upsets me the most about it is that the testing for the Olympics is not random. You know when it is. They're just like NFL players. You know when you're gonna get tested before the season. NBA players is the same thing. You know when it's coming. So you mean to tell me you couldn't get off of it for a two-week, three-week period? I mean, that that that's the biggest issue in this whole thing is that she knew when it was coming and she still tested positive for it. Now, personally, I think she probably just made a rookie mistake. She, you know, smoked or whatever she did and probably did things to conceal it or whatever and, you know, still got popped anyway because trust and believe – I know that she's not the only one out there who's who's have been smoking because we know this. We ain't even gonna get into doping in the Olympics, man, because it's, it's rampant. I mean, it's it's a joke at this point, man. Um, and um, but for her to do that and then know know when the date was coming, still tested positive for it. I just that that that's the part that bothered me the most. But I won't vilify her too much because she is twenty one years old. You know, and yeah. I'm, I imagine what I was like at 21. So I can't I can't bang on it like that. But she's lost an opportunity and she's lost millions that she would never recruit recoup throughout her career. And that's, you know, what you I agree with everything you said. And, you know, life is about learning your lessons. And, and you know, you could criticize her. And, um, you know, I agree with what you said about. Take, I mean, she knew that test was coming. <laughs> I mean, you, yeah. There's no denying that. But I like the fact that she stood up, said it, my bag, my fault. Um, yeah. I don't have anybody to blame but myself. And, you know, her punishment is, you, you, you know, I, I, I don't, like, I really don't put a lot of, criticism on someone that I know that's going to pay the price of that mistake. And she's going to pay that price. Yes. As you can. She, she won't be in the Olympics. All ador endorsement deals, potential earnings from endorsement deals that could have come from her. Um, you know, I mean, she to look like she probably would have been the favorite. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, and just, um, you know, when you're 21, you know, I can go back when I'm 21. I mean, when you're 21, you don't think ahead. You think right the next minute, the next hour. You don't. You don't really think about long-term impact. You just, you just go at your hunch, and you, you know, you you, you live life sometimes by trial and error. And um, you know, if she had to do this again, and, and play play it all back over, yeah, she probably would have did a, a lot of things different. <laughs> but, oh, you know, I'm sure. You well, know, I think the um, U.S. Olympic team, the, the Olympics committee, I mean, they're using her as an example, you know. I mean, I heard one of the reactions 
you know, her final shot was trying to get on the four by 100 relay. And, um, you know, her, she was denied that. And then I heard that the response for her denial is that, you know, we have rules and it wouldn't look good for the rest of the team if we allowed her on, on that relay team. So, yeah. And I'm fine with that. Yeah. I, I don't have no argument. I think, I think she, she, she's paying the price. When you make a mistake, you got to, you got to answer to your mistake. She's answering to the mistake by being denied. Um, she, she's not going to participate in the Olympics. So uh, yeah. I don't think there's any lesson or any punishment more greater than that. So she, she's, she's being handed her punishment. And um, I sure would have loved to see her run in the Olympics. <laughs> yeah, I think she would have, she would have blazed them, man. I, 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 she's incredibly talented for uh, such a young individual. I remember, hearing about her at LSU yeah. uh, freshman track star who's blowing the competition away. Saw one of her meets, man. And I was like, man, this, this girl's amazing. And mm -hmm. right after her track season at LSU was done, I'm pretty sure she talked to her camp, talked to LSU and everybody was a consensus. It's time to go pro because yeah. there's nothing, there was nothing left in college for her because she was the best in college, you know? So um, I think she's only going to get better. As time goes along, she just has to stay diligent, continue to train. Um, see it as, you know, use this as your redemption story. You know, use it, use it as fuel. You know, even though you're the one that put yourself in this hole, still use it as fuel. Um, but uh, I will say about one thing about her um, and watching watching uh, her interview and how kind of, you know, just her admittance to it. And she's kind of was matter of fact about it. It was kind of like, you know, hey, you know, it, it was what it was. Cause I'm sure she knew you, yeah. you, you had to, you had to have known, you had to have known. So, um, but yeah, I wish her, I wish her all the best, man. But I think she's incredibly talented and hopefully she can, you know, just move past this, you know, and I said so the groundswell of support I saw, um, but you you also had people who looked at it from different angles. One of the things I saw is they tried to make it a black black and white thing. Oh, they don't want to see black women succeed. They don't want to see black people succeed. I was like, uh, and somebody instantly brought out Michael Phelps. Uh, Michael Phelps served a three month suspension, not a one month suspension, a three month suspension. Lost money, lost endorsements for a photo. He didn't even test positive. It was for a photo. So you can't call any bias here. You can't say it's a racial thing. None of that, because he paid a much higher penalty for a photo, you know. So um, yeah, people coming at coming at it with all different types of angles, and I'm like, no, 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 no. This is not a black and white issue. This is not a man versus woman issue. This is you know somebody making a decision that they shouldn't have made issue, and she has to be accountable because letting her run shows that there's uh, there's no accountability. If you yeah. if they just if they reverse the decision now and say we're going to let her run anyway, you open the door for so much, you know. Yeah. You open the door for everybody then, because like where do you stop? Where do you stop it at? Do you stop it at marijuana? Do you stop it at HGH? Do you stop it at anabolic steroids? Do you stop it at um, um, it's uh, it's it's another one, because I know the big one was the Balco, that the Balco back in the day, that was the, that was the big one. Do you stop that company? Like, wh what do you do? What, what do you stop it? So, you know, you, you have to, you got to cut it somewhere. You see Harrison prime says YOLO, you only live once. Yeah. You only live once and uh, you lose out on potentially $10 million. So <laughs> I'd rather go get my 10 million. Well, you gotta be fast, but you also gotta be smart, man. It, it's yeah. a moral to that story. And, um, you know, you can also look at it from a, from another angle. You know, I always think that young athletes like her and others, football players and all, I mean, you always, even on a negative sense, you can, um, you can make yourself a role model in a negative way, but help somebody below you, you know, and maybe that's something I mean, we might be talking four years from now that she might be the greatest Olympian of all, and we'll see her on, on NBC or CBS or whoever televising the next Olympics and just right. talking about what she learned from this experience. And, you yeah. know, young young athletes, I mean, I'm, 
I'm all for young young people not in her position but learning from from someone else's fault you know and I think this is something where a young track star you know you could go out on a Saturday night and be 19 years old be around a crowd of friends and get forced into smoking with marijuana and not not forced but be yeah, a peer pressure yeah. peer pressure right so yeah I think this is also a lesson to young people, man. That you you know you got to be headstrong. You 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 have to make wise decisions at all times because it can come back to you, to hurt you in a, in, a, in, a, in a negative way, off a mis- off a simple mistake, you know. So yeah, you just there's always a positive to a negative. Yeah, is he look at Harrison over here? We know what Harrison like to do. <laughs> she smoked weed, let her live. <laughs> so, uh, she deserves her own strand. Hey, I've been seeing the bags of them, uh, Harrison. So her own strand is coming. I seen they had Shikari runs and all of that. So yeah, they, it, it's coming. It's coming for sure. They had her own one of the little weed bags. I saw it already. So that's coming. So she gonna be able to market. She that, that that's gonna be an avenue for. Her. You know, not now, but you know, eventually. You yeah, say I now do. she's focused. She's focused and stay away from pregnancy the next few years. She's gonna have a great comeback story of all time. Yeah, she's at hey, keep training, stay diligent. Yeah, and that, that's a big one too. Seems the after pregnancy is it's rough, it's it's very hard for them. You know, that's the closest they come to death, so that makes sense. Yeah. Uh you say, and it's the company she keeps. Yeah, it's the company she keeps, of course. You know, it's it's her circle. You got to have people in that circle who, you know. Who get say, hey, this is not a good idea. You have such a great opportunity ahead of you, and basically counsel her and try to lead her in the right direction. But at the end of the day, nobody held her down. Nobody made her ingest anything. Nobody made her smoke anything. Nobody made her drink anything. You know, yeah. that's it, it was her decision. You know, so hey, and I know, and I know, I understand the conversation on weed is really lax now. I understand that. I get that. It's illegal in 19 states. It's going to be legal nationwide uh, at, at some point. You got people making billions of dollars off the industry. It was legal where she tested positive at in Oregon. Yeah. But the rules are the rules. Yeah. Yeah, that's the rules. The rules are the rules, man. Rules are the rules, man. Oh, what he say? He said, I've had to learn the hard way about the company I've kept over the years. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man, you have to watch the company you keep. Hey, it wasn't Nas and Nas said in the song, they came to do drugs and you came to sing. You got to watch the company you keep. You know, Brennan, that's one of the hardest things for a professional athlete when they, when they, you know, reach the mountaintop. Oh, man. And you never want to forget where you come from. Yep. And I had this conversation with, um, with Dawkins. Um, that you know when you reach a certain point as a professional athlete there's certain people you grew up with you, you can't hang with them anymore <laughs> i mean that's a tough thing but you 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 can't hang with all your homies that you hang when you when you was nothing no nope. I mean, you know it's just and i and they advise nfl players that you know whether they take take yep. heat who knows but they advise it because they they like a target you know they 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 got all this money mm-hmm. and you can you know just because you had a great homeboy when you were 16 I mean, it doesn't mean he's the same great homeboy and y'all 27 you know and, yep. and it, it's a hard fact of life but man you know you know because you always want to be back you know, you you never want to turn your back on your home. You never want to turn your back on people that knew who you were when you you know you literally you would nobody knew you outside of of, of your of, of your people in your neighborhood. But you know, everybody don't have the same incentive. Everybody don't have the same motive. No, and that's one of the things they they tell these professional athletes, man. You got to watch the crowd you're with. Oh yeah, I mean, people change. Even the guys that you grew up with, man, that don't mean that they they the same person. You know, as, as hard as that sound. Yeah, see, yeah. it's a worldwide competition. We have to have established rules. 
all countries can follow. Yeah, you're right. You're right, Chris. All countries have to follow. It has to be established because this is this isn't just the U.S. This is worldwide and it's illegal in over 200 countries, they said. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, the, that that argument falls on, on deaf ears. They're like, well, they have to change the rules. You have to change the world, literally, in order to get that passed through. Um, but man, what you said was um, I agree with that totally because you know, I'm from the north side of Jacksonville, Florida. Anybody who knows about the north side of Jacksonville, Florida, yeah. I mean, it's it's not the it's not the softest place in Jacksonville. No, Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. It's a little it's a little it's a little ashy over there. I need a little lotion over there. It's it's, it's a little rough over there on the north side of Jacksonville, and that's where I come from. But even I understand that hey, it's it's people there that I don't associate with. Hey, yeah. At a certain point, you outgrow Pookie, Ray Ray, Walmart, Tavius, and Lil Homicide. You outgrow those people. And I joke, I say that all the time and I joke about it, but I know these guys. I know I grew up with them. When I see them, I go back, you know, see my mom. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? But, you know, I'm not hanging out with them. We're not going out to the clubs. We're not, you know, none of that stuff, man. You know, you have to change. You, you do. You got to leave people behind. You can't take everybody with you. I, I used to preach that message to my young guys all the time. Mm -hmm. because you can't man miss not on the opportunity because of someone else hurts oh that 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 hurts it wasn't at least jakari went down by her own hand imagine yeah. it had it had been because of somebody else i mean yeah. that that's that's pain right there man so yes you have to watch your circle and watch the company you keep yeah do. yeah yeah man so i think we covered that you know we could put a pin in that right here and let's talk about Miss Rachel Nichols, man. I got some, I got some opinions on this Rachel Nichols story. So you know, we, we spoke about it briefly, but one of the things that, um, because I listened to the audio today, I hadn't listened to the audio. I just seen like you know the transcripts or whatever people talking about it. I listened to the audio, listen to what she said, and you know, after listening to what she said, you know, what she sounds like she sounds like the average run of the mill white woman. I mean, this this not she doesn't sound like a flaming racist. She doesn't sound like she was the daughter of a clansman or anything like that. She didn't sound like any of those things, man. She sounds like the average um, white woman, you know. But problem with that is, is that she's one of those ones where you know what I call the the liberals. The liberals will have Black Lives Matter in their bio. They're gonna march for George Floyd. Um, they're going to protest for police brutality against unarmed black men. But in private, they have conversations like that, calling you a black woman, a diversity hire. Yes, those same people out there marching next to you are Rachel Nichols. That's what they are. You know, and does that make her necessarily a bad person? No, no. You just need to know where they stand and what they're really about. You know, um, like I, I said earlier, like when it comes to, say, feminism, for example, I'm sure that Rachel Nichols might identify herself as a feminist because I know she's um, she seems to be a liberal because she does that social justice and virtual signaling stuff. And so I tell any black woman, like, what is the point of you being a feminist when, you know, the feminist movement was not your movement? It was not for you. This is for white women against white men. That's what it was for. Now, white women included all women and women of color to further. Um, um, to further get their point across to basically gain more power and they painted this for all women but it's for white women been to benefit the most and you said something earlier that um that hit me they want to see you win of course but they don't want to see it at their expense and that was her problem she want to see maria taylor win but she doesn't want it to happen at her expense yeah well i got a lot to say on this topic <laughs> <laughs> The number one thing that I'm an advocate of, and I've even expressed this at my newspaper, man, is that this more than anything shows how far we are behind in diversity. To even have this situation where she bringing up something that ESPN feeling so much pressure to diversify their news, you know, their newsroom, mm -hmm. yep. they are advancing Miss Taylor. To a, to a position where she feels her her you know her her status as a studio host is being threatened and that that goes all the only argument about this whole situation is is the lack of diversity that even she would even think that you know 
because mm -hmm. I'm not a television expert. I'm not. I mean, I watch a lot of sports. I watch a lot of studio shows, but but she she's very good. I mean, she's very versatile. You know, yeah. there's no drop off when she does football to to um, to to basketball, NBA, and and, and she's strong minded. You know, I, I remember a few years ago when Nick Saban was very rude yes. to her, and she she didn't stop, she didn't budge, she she. I mean, she she rubbed that off like like a true professional, but when you have a situation, well, ESPN obviously doesn't have an, enough black reporters. They don't have enough high profile re re reporters, and then even for her to come out and say that basically she she wants the same amount of money as Stephen A. You know, which in her right she got every every right to to. To ask for as much as she's um that, that she want to, aim but, high. But the problem is, is that you know, particularly black women, there there's not enough diversity. That, that that there's not enough young ladies on 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 these networks and in newsrooms too. That you you have a situation like this because. You know, she, she, you know, I mean, she's been around a long time. I mean, you know, I mean, I don't have any bad words to say about her, her work, but that was the wrong thing to say, you know, regardless if it's, uh, Oh man. Oh, there you go. But it was oh. like her own, her own, well, I won't say her own fault, but from what I heard, that um, Rachel had the, the the recording happened in the bubble, and she was actually yeah. doing the um, I think she was doing the jump of her basketball show. She mm -hmm. was still doing it, but she was actually having you know the, the camera was in her room, and they and from the story I read, they said that she really didn't know how to operate the camera, so that yeah. camera there was a switch she's supposed to cut off. And she didn't cut it off. And then she was having this conversation basically with this agent. Yeah. And I mean, for, for, for all, I mean, I mean, Rachel feels, you know, it's just tough to, to hear someone saying they feel threatened by another reporter who's basically she's just doing a job. She she didn't hire herself to be put in to be in the NBA finals host. You know, that decision was based on ESPN. It wasn't based on Maria Taylor. Yeah. And just hear negative comments about, you know, basically I just think it's a, it's a slight of not being recognized for her talent, and she's being recognized as just being a minority, and it sounds like Rachel just basically saying, you know, she only got this promotion because she's black, yeah. and that's just, a, that, I mean, come on, that's I mean, wrong. That's the wrong thing to say, and if you go back and look at her track record. She's put in the work. I mean, there's no yeah. question about it. She's putting in the Maria Taylor has put in the work. Yeah, no yes, she has. Oh, yeah. Yes, she has. Um, I did see that where she couldn't work the equipment, and so she had left it on. I did see that. And by mistake. The, the, by mistake, yeah. And the funny thing in all of this is when I listen to the audio, she says it. She said ESPN has a horrible track record with diversity. Especially, she said, as a woman, she said they have a horrible track record with diversity. But to to cure your ills with diversity, don't start over here. That's basically what she was saying. She said, yeah. hey, yeah, y'all need to fix your diversity issue at ESPN, but don't start with me. Don't do it over here. Go give, go give a job to somebody else, you know? She feels that the, their push for diversity is sidetracking her advancement at ESPN. Which yeah. I mean, come on, man. Come on. Man. I just think that's the wrong, that's the wrong outlook. That's the wrong. And even though that that conversation was in private, because actually it came on a server. And I mean, I don't know how many people from ESPN actually caught that comment off the server. So they they start spreading that, you know, spreading it around, letting letting co-workers hear what she was saying, which, you know. 
Well, yeah, I, I figured somebody got a hold to it, and mm -hmm. um, she um, they 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 leaked it and spread it around. Mm -hmm. Spread it around. Yeah, because it, it was rumors about it, and then that rumor about her and supposedly Jimmy Butler and some um, extracurricular activities in Jimmy Butler's room, which he denied, she denied, or whatever. But you know that was all around that same time. And it's funny, she talks about diversity and her getting a job simply because she's a black woman. When somebody, um, I can't remember who I was watching, but they brought the point where Rachel Nichols has ties to Diane Sawyer. Mm -hmm. So just off that alone, you can't talk about somebody getting a job. Now, of course, Rachel may have gotten that job on her own volition. Diane mm -hmm. Sawyer may have nothing to do with it. But do I know that? Do we know that? No, no. We don't know. It's Diane Sawyer. So you got to ace in the hole yourself. So I mean, it, it's it, it's crazy, but it's it's standards for thee and not for me. That's what this is about. Yeah, exactly. And then you know you got to look at hey, Maria Taylor has the same passion as Rachel. I mean, she wants the same thing as Rachel, and she's yeah. working for. Her. So if she get on the pedestal or whatever, I mean, she's probably not even going to be at ESPN anymore. But you can't comment like that. And criticize someone who has basically advanced solely on their work ethic, on, on, on their talent. You know, they're not gonna mm -hmm. push her in a studio job. I mean, I watched a lot all the time on SCC studio and you know, being a sideline reporter and yeah. and you know, being the NBA finals is great, but she's done more work. Involved in the NBA than just being the studio host for the NBA final. So yeah, yeah. Let's see. I, I don't want to mess up your name. I don't know if that's Judex Jean Marie, uh, but it says Rachel's issue was that it's in her contract to get the NBA countdown hosting position, but she's still wrong for what she said. But ESPN is puppet master here. Hey, you got no no bite back on me for ESPN being puppet master. She did mention that that it was in her contract in the audio. For her to be the nba countdown host you know but like you said nba i mean espn is the puppet master here let's see jakari says i don't think she was tripping too bad she established herself as a big dog but she put her foot um a little too far in her mouth yeah and yeah she did she did and I, that's why i said it. i don't think this is this is anything that warrants her losing her job because it's not it's not this not a it's not racist i mean this I mean, I just I don't I don't see it as that. I don't see it as it because there's been much worse things said about people. Mm -hmm. Um it's saying Chris says all I heard was someone not willing to give up their job for anyone. ESPN is to blame. Yeah. And which you can speak to this, Mr. Reed. That's why ESPN is going through what they're going through as far as them having to continuously cut people and losing revenue. Mm -hmm. And it's also because they hadn't had a tra a track. I mean, I mean, what's the you got to say what the elephant is in the room. And one of the problems at ESPN, I mean, yeah, um, Stephen A is is making $8 million, but they're, they need more Stephen A's. They, they, I mean, they need, you know, they need yeah. more. For, I'm not just talking about just former football players and they coming yeah. in the studio and things. I'm talking about getting qualified black journalists and being hired by ESPN, and 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 not having five of them, you know, if if if, yeah. if, if it's six, seven, eight, nine, ten is talent, and you have a position that's open or, or or create one, but when it comes down to low numbers and and you got Rachel saying, oh, there's so much pressure for diversity. It is, it is yeah. pressure to be diverse. It is pressure for diversity. Because you got an audience like me, you, and others are probably on, on, on here listening. We we want to see more people on television look like us. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there is pressure. But when you have a rising star who's done everything she's supposed to do, which Maria Teller has done, then I don't want to hear some criticism talking about, well, the only reason why she's moving up in the in the position is because of because of diversity. That's that and that's the wrong thing to say because it's not true, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's definitely the wrong thing to say. You see, Jakari said he missed the Stuart the Stuart Scott days. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, man. I'm, I miss the Stuart Scott days, man. That's yeah. He's a legend, no doubt. But yeah, like, 
Yeah, but like you said, more diversity is needed. And then, you know, yeah. you wouldn't have, uh, they're still gonna have these conversations because this conversation wasn't meant to get out. It wasn't said in a public forum. It was meant in private. And we know how things, people, you could, rec- if you record me in here and I don't know I'm being recorded, um, mm-hmm. they could say, man, this, this individual might be disturbed because you're going to hear some things that, you know, I'm going to say off camera. Yeah. But um, just overall, man, um, I, I well, personally, uh, ESPN and Maria Taylor are looking like they're headed for a divorce yeah. because I told you what they did. They yeah. offered her five initially. Then she declined that because she wanted Stephen A money. Fine with that. Cool. Came back to the negotiation table. They offered her between two and three million dollars. They lowballed it. So now, um, you know, look like she uh, probably won't be back with ESPN. Rumor has it, um, uh, according to Mr. Robert Littell for Black Sports Online, he said that the rumor is that she's going to um, NBC. And um, I think that'll be a big get for NBC. Um, but one thing about it, ESPN has a problem on their hands, man, because Stephen A is not all he, – he's great and he's good at what he does, but you need more, man. Yeah. You need more. And you know another thing, Brandon, is this, man. They're always going to be, I don't care if you're working at the shipyard or if you're working at the Times Union or if you're working anywhere, there's going to be some that be offended by diversity numbers. They, they, they're going to feel yeah. like they're threatened. And that just that's America. There's nothing we yeah. can do. It. There's nothing we can say. We don't know what private conversations are outside or in their homes. But, you yeah. know, we live in a country where there are some people who feel that uh, diversity is not necessary, you know, which is which is you, we know that's false. <laughs> so, yes. But um, yeah. I think Rachel spoke spoke for a lot more than, than just her. On, on oh, that, yes. Or topic like that. You know, real yes. is real. I mean, we live in a country right now where everything is is have to be discussed, talked about. It has to be scrutinized. It has to be because we're living in a period now where the young generation, they're not going to sit back and just say, well, that's how my father lived and, 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 and we just got to live, deal with it. That younger generation for all of it, I mean, some, they got some fault. Now you, you have to treat them gentle and you, you mm-hmm. know, you can't, you, you, you can't treat the 18, 19 year olds like 18, 19 year olds were treated 20 years ago. But they, one thing I do respect about them, they don't sit back and don't do nothing. <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, Jakar say about like the Clippers GM combo. He showed his true colors because he thought he was in the clear. Oh, you're talking about the owner, uh, Donald Sterling? Oh, yeah. That girl, his girlfriend recorded him. I love yeah. Hey, Dave Chappelle said it best. He said, if you're an older white guy and you are racist, and you have racist thoughts, you have issues with black people, he said, you probably shouldn't tell your black girlfriend about that stuff because <laughs> she's going to record you and put you out there. <laughs> oh, yeah, boy, that. Let's see. Jean Marie says ESPN is ran by a bunch of good old boys who will cut off their nose to spite their face. Hey, we talked about the good old boys today, man. We already know what that's about. We yeah. already know what that's about, you know. And like you said, it, former football players and basketball players, that's cool and all, but you need real journalists in there there's plenty of young hungry talent out there they need to go find it yeah. i see it i see a bunch of guys who cover sports um, that i've met through social media who've seen my clips i like their stuff they like my stuff and those guys are really good at what they do what they do and they've been doing it for a lot longer than me mm-hmm. and so true you hold a casting call say hey we're looking for sports casters we're looking for this demographic and i guarantee you you're going to get hundreds who show up and there's going to be some talent in there, mm-hmm. but are they doing that? Are they doing that? They're keeping them. They're keeping Stephen A. So they can say that. Well, at least we have Stephen. We got one. <laughs> yeah, one black person at a time. One black. One. <laughs> hey, what they say? The the one famous black person rule. One famous black person at a time. That's all we can take. Yeah. 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 Our world That's still got so much trouble that we we got a whole lot to fix for. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and Jakari said, you are right about hungry journalists uh, need them jobs because I can't stand Brandon Marshall. Hey, I will say this, Jakari. Coming up, and when I was like, man, I want to be a sportscaster, one of the things that deterred me 
was former athletes. It seemed like every year former athletes would get a bunch of the positions. It was just given given to them whatever. Or they they did um like RG three did a interview. Um, he did. I think he called like a mock game, and he did like color commentating. They said he was absolutely excellent in it, and they said that he's going to be. He's like a Tony Romo level um, commentator, man. They say he's going to be excellent. If he decides to do it after he retires, he's going to be great. Got no problem with that. But like, like when I saw all those former athletes, I was like, I got discouraged because I'm like, well, if it's up to, if it comes down to me and say Ladanian Tomlinson, they're going to give it to Ladanian Tomlinson because he played. Not because he's good at doing this. It's going to be because he played. But I also noticed that all of them are not good at what they do, man. And a lot of them got their positions just because they played. It's it's a few of them out there. I won't call nobody out because I'm not like that. But there's a few of them out there that are hot garbage. And it's the only reason they're on TV in the suit is because they bounced the ball and ran the ball across the goal line. And you know something else, man, I, particularly in the NBA, there a lot of these – a lot of these – former player announcers well when they were players they didn't do anything for the media they didn't want to talk they 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 was off limits they were surly they were like i mean there's some guys i i won't say names but there's some guys on 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 network television that have no dealing with the media whatsoever yeah you know, one of the things I loved about Kobe Bryant, and just a just a story, Kobe Bryant. You know, in the NBA, you have the shoot around in the morning, and then you come back, and the, and the locker room is open before the game. At no time, this guy was too big not to talk to the media during the shoot around in the morning. Even if he was getting treatment, he would talk to the media in you know whether it was in the training room or outside that training room. And then he would come back and allow you to talk to him before the game. The only other guy that's a superstar that's similar to that is LeBron. All yeah. the rest of them, they don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> but a lot of them on TV. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's why um, when uh, said Naomi Osaka, when she uh, pulled out of Wimbledon, um, was it Wimbledon or the French Open? I think it was Wimbledon. French. I think the French Open, French Open. OK, yeah, she pulled out of the French Open and, you know, they talked about her anxiety after she had beat Serena and how she just didn't want to talk to the media. But I said that, OK, you might not want to talk to the media, but it's something that you have to do because the sport requires you to do so. The sport sports don't grow like they like they grew to today. If players don't do the media, doing media personalizes the athlete. It puts a face to the game and allows the novice to follow the game and follow their favorite players. That's what it does. You have to do it. It's a requirement and you're making millions of dollars. So get your mentals right, do whatever you got to do, but you need to stand there and face it because when you don't like Kyrie Irving, Kyrie Irving might have some issues he's going through, but when he did not answer the media, who ended up having to speak for him? Coaches and teammates. They're answering questions about Kyrie Irving that, he's not answering himself so instead of him being one of the leaders that were on that team his responsibility got pushed on the other people other people and you 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 just you you can't do that and you know another thing brandon when Mm -hmm. when guys don't talk like if there's an issue i I can remember back when Jalen was going through the issues with you know the the coach or, or, or wanting to be traded and all that so the jaguars kind of kept them off limits but it doesn't it doesn't change the storyline it is like yeah. somebody gonna have to answer it. even if you don't make him available the yeah. the storyline is not leaving it is it, it's, it's yeah. not going away just because you won't make him available you know right and that's right. just one of the things about sports friends franchises that they so guarded they so protective and all you got to do is Put the subject guy. It, 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 hey, if the guy doesn't skip practices or even injured, then put him at the podium. Let him answer some questions. Yes. And then, and then, the, and then the, the the topic is gone. It's time to move on to, to something else. Oh. But when you, oh well, he can't talk today. Oh, he's off limits. The reporter still going to continue to 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 ask those questions. And it's not yeah. going away just because you protecting the, a grown man from 
answering the questions that need to be asked. I mean, I yep. just think that's the, the one of the worst things about professional sports is that sometimes they they treat athletes like they're um, they need protection. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, that, that is one of the issues to say. A lot of ex-athletes talk out the side of their neck. And they're biased, man. They yeah. are so biased. Oh, my goodness. They're yeah. so biased. They don't ask any questions. I mean, they, I mean, come on, man. I I, I like the, the TNT NBA show. I, I love that show. I like Kenny, Shaq, and, and Barkley. But let them ask an athlete. Let them ask one of the players a question. And they just like softball questions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they do. They do softball. Them. Yeah, well, how you go? I mean, uh, what, what are you guys going to do today? I mean, uh, what is it going to take to win? I mean, come on, man. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, Jakari brought up. He said, everybody love beast mode. He said, you know why I'm here. You know, yeah, that, that was that was hilarious, man, because he got he got pissed off talking about having to talk to the media. So he oh, said, yeah. OK, I'm going to give you I'm tired of getting fined. So let me just give you these one word answers and we going on about it, going on about our business. But yeah, man, it's um it's crazy. Hey, he said Kyrie is a nut. Man, hey, I love Uncle Drew, but you know, Kyrie is a little out there. Yes, indeed. But yeah. So perfect segue into our next topic. Let's talk about these NBA finals. Now, I don't know about you, but mm -hmm. uh Shannon Sharp posted a meme uh today and it said Brooke Lopez, Robin Lopez, Mario Lopez, doesn't matter. Sons and six. And I'm going to update that one. I'm going to update it. I'm, I'm going to change it up a little bit. Brooke Lopez, Robin Lopez, Mario Lopez, doesn't matter. Sons and five. Because if if they get, they had 32, 27, and 22 from Paul, Book, and Aiton. If I get that from those three, I mean, what 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 can you do? What can you do? Like Giannis and Middleton would literally have to score thirty plus from the both of them. Drew Holiday got to give me at least fifteen to twenty, and I got to get some contributions off the bench in order to match something like that. Like watching Chris Paul, that elbow jumper is deadly. They, they like they have nothing for it because he's going. He can shoot threes, and then when you come, when you stop at the three point line, he'll blow by you. He take the elbow jumper, or he'll take it to the hoop. But it's my comments. <laughs> <laughs> I hate watching the Milwaukee Bucks. I just, mm -hmm. I, I, I love the athleticism. I, I love Giannis. I love Drew, Drew Holiday. I like Chris Middleton. I don't like Mike Budenholzer. Man, yeah. I just, I think, I just, I don't think that he makes. A good. I mean, take him. Get it. Take three games into a series for him to make the right defensive calls or a switch the defenses around or, or make the appropriate adjustments. And and you go back to game one. I mean, everybody know that the Suns do pick and roll at the top of the key. They're gonna have Chris Paul at, and he's the, he's the he's the pick and roll guy. Yeah. And for you not to put Drew Holiday on Chris Paul, I mean, Drew Holiday is like the best on-ball defender in the league, one of the best, and yeah. and he's big and physical, and he could he can he could he could jump through a pick like he can he can physically get through a pick, so you don't have to have a switch, you know. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to have a switch. You, you don't have to worry about Brooke Lopez trying to guard Chris Paul. And it's right. like those guys, the same mistake they made in the first game against the Hawks, it was the same mistake they made in game one against the Suns. You know, yes. you can't switch and put a big on a guard. You can't, you couldn't do it with Trey, and you're not gonna do it with Chris. So yes. you gotta you, you you gotta bring your guys up to the top of the key and defend the perimeter. And it's like to me, it's almost like this guy saying, Well, no matter what they do. Our talent is better than your talent, or something. And I mean, come on, man you you don't you don't play a finals to, to go two games in and be down 0-2 to make the appropriate changes or, or, or adjustments. And it just yeah. seems either he's stubborn or he overcoaches. <laughs> yeah, 
it's 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 one of it's one of the other. It's one of the other. like every anytime I see a big switch on to a guard, I cringe. Yeah. Because it, I mean, even if it's a yeah, even if it's a very athletic big who can seemingly guard smaller players from time to time. Mm-hmm. Still, one of the greatest defending big men is um oh how's his name? I, I just had his name in my head for the uh Spurs. Duncan, oh, Tim Duncan. Duncan. Tim Duncan. One Duncan. of the greatest defensive big men to ever play the game. The big fundamental. No, I watched when they used to play against the Suns when um uh, uh Steve Nash was on his MVP runs. And anytime he got switched on to Steve Nash, mm-hmm. he just looked at Tim Duncan and shot over it. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, what this why? Why is this happening? Why are you doing this? There's no reason to have this. You need to have a guard on a guard. And you're right. Chris Paul is going to eat up Brooke Lopez. Number one, Brooke Lopez has cinder blocks for feet. Come on, let's just let's just, let's just get that out there. He got cinder blocks for feet, so he can't stay in front of Chris. And which I, I and I'm gonna see what you got to say to this. I had a co-worker today, and I was telling him about DeAndre Ayton, and I said, mm-hmm. dude. But the, one of the most athletic seven footers in the entire league, period. Mm-hmm. He run up the floor, um, jump out the gym. You know, he can handle the ball a little bit. I said he's probably one of the most athletic big men in the entire league. And my coworkers is like, he just don't see the athleticism in DeAndre Ayton. And I'm like, dude, compare him to the other bigs in the league. They can't do what he do. Yeah. I say Boogie Cousins can only dream of being that fast and jumping yeah. that high. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, even uh, uh, Anthony Davis, even when he was a string bean before he got his man body, wasn't yeah. that athletic. Yeah. Uh, the only one that comes close to his athleticism is maybe Dwight Howard. But Dwight is like really like six nine ish. They say he's like maybe maybe six ten. De- uh, DeAndre is a legit seven footer out there. Oh yeah, ain't no question about it. And he can cre- create his own shot. He can rebound. He can run the floor. And if I, if, you know, if I was Milwaukee, I would have Giannis on Aiden straight up. Yes. I, I, I would have, I, I don't care where Aiden go, I, I would have Giannis on. Him. And then I would, yeah. I would put my, I, I would, I would do everything possible to defend their perimeter guys. And yeah. I would have a better chance of winning that game than, the, than what they're doing right now. You know? Yeah. You got to take the ball out of the facilitator's hands on a, on a pick and roll. You got to yep. do that. You got to get the ball out of Chris Paul's hand. I'd rather have Booker beating me from threes than have Chris Paul just totally space the floor and dismantle my defense, go right through the middle of my defense and dismantle it. I, I would rather go with the odds of Booker making threes than have Chris yep. Paul yep. drive through the lane for layups. All, yep. all, all hitting that air ball jumper open, you know? And that's I, I just think Milwaukee – they over you got to take advantage of your talent that you got you know you can't you, you don't need to switch at this point you don't you, you don't need to do anything different you do what you did in the last three games against Atlanta and you play the same way you played Atlanta that's what you got to do with the Suns <laughs> yeah same you know, the same yeah, way see Jakari say look she say CP3 showed him he got that killer um in him in his playoff run Blood in the water, point God going for the throat. Oh, Chris Paul, Chris Paul is a pit bull, man. Yeah, yeah. He, when he when he's gonna go for the throat every single time, every single time. Let's see. Um, they say he mixed up Portis a few times too. Oh yeah, uh, Bobby Portis. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you know another thing about Chris, man, he don't care if he hurts your feelings. I mean, Chris, no. Chris can. I mean. Chris done got on Aiden so much that he, I know it's coming. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know he's going to say I'm out of position. Oh, I should be at this spot to get a pass. I mean, it, it just sec- it, it doesn't become second nature, but that's how he is, man. He pushes yeah. everybody to be for maximum effort. And uh, I, I just, I, I don't know, man. I just see so many different shooters that the Suns have. They just got versatility. I mean, you go with the butt bench. They got Cameron Payne come off. He can if, if Chris come out the game, there's no drop off. You know, might even be a better shooter at, at, at that at, at the point guard spot with 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 Payne. But the, I like the I like I, I really like their roster. 
and I like a guy like Monty Williams. <laughs> yeah. You know, Monty is a is is a guy that's a true, just a true good guy. You know, it, it, there's not a lot of true true good guys in this world. You know, guys yeah. who, who preach it and talk it. You know, he go mm -hmm. to the soup kitchen to help the needy, and he doesn't care if a camera is there or not. You know, he doesn't do something for for publicity wise. He do something because it's in the heart. And yeah. uh, you know, I, I just feel a guy like him should should be rewarded, man. I I saw what he went through in New Orleans. He took a team that to the playoffs and got fired for going forty five and thirty seven. You know, because of a clash with Dale Demps. You know, but. Yeah. I think he's he's on a on a on a team. He has a a team now where they got two way players. All of them done bought into his system. All of them defend. I mean, you can't play for Monty Williams if you don't if you don't put no effort in the, on the defensive side. He's he's got those caliber players. And to be honest, I know everybody loves the Lakers. Some people saying Golden State coming back. Does Clay Thompson coming back? But this this Phoenix team, they I think they're gonna be around for a while because they're young, they're hungry, and they got good coaching and they discipline. And I, I don't think there's just a one season wonder here either. No, I don't think so either. Um I think um Chris Paul can play at this level for another couple of years, man. Mm -hmm. He said, You're not a sports fan if you don't want to see uh CP3 get a ring. Dude, and this over this is overdue for him to get a ring because he 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 had a he was he was so close to getting a ring, but circumstances out of his control happened. Um ownership went to was it uh David Stern? Ownership yeah. of um the Pelicans went to David Stern and the Lakers had that trade in place to get him from New Orleans and David Stern vetoed the trade. Yeah. And that pissed a lot of people off. If CP3 had a went to LA, he would have won titles with LA. He would have been a part. They they wouldn't. They probably would have won three straight and not two, and lost the and lost the third. They probably would have won three straight, man. It's just that with um oh 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 oh, oh man oh wow for the first time in the history of the show we got the barber j mac on the line see cp3 to new york lol don't mind me yeah he a knicks fan he a giants fan he think david he think um uh, uh your, your, your boy david jones is the truth you know what i'm saying hey he's the one keep it line hey you see the lineup you see the lineup that, that's that's j mac the barber right there man i've been telling him to come on the show he, he been talking trash but we're gonna do it once nfl season start he's gonna be on here to talk about his giants but cp3 to new york hmm that's interesting I don't see him getting away from Phoenix, though. I don't uh, see that. I, don't see. I see retirement before I see him becoming a Nick. <laughs> right. 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 Uh, you see, do you see the Lakers getting Dame or Steph? Um, They could have had Kyle Lowry, which is interesting. I didn't know they were so close to getting Kyle Lowry, and they didn't get him. That would have helped them a lot, but I think they'll be closer to Dame than they would be Steph. And there's an outside possibility. They say Kawhi, which I'm shocked about that just a little bit, just a teeny bit. Um, but they says outside chance Kawhi um, is going to be there. See, so Lisa say looking good, B. Hey, I appreciate it. You know, I try to keep it up a little bit. I try to keep it up a little bit. <laughs> man, look at Yogi. Man, you got a fan club, man. <laughs> <laughs> ah! I try, man. I try. I try. Got that box fade, man. Go ahead with it. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I man. Bad, I can't be kid and play, man. <laughs> oh, oh, you know. Let's see how this. Let's see how this go right here, man. You know. Yeah, it is what it is. We should have did but... this by 20, 20 years ago when I had an afro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But Damian Damian Lillard to the Lakers, I mean that that right, that's 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 dangerous right there. Because Dennis Schroeder, Dennis Schroeder wants wants to get the bag. So hey, hey, if J Mac, if you still watching that, that's that's probably who your point guard is, is Dennis Schroeder. I see I can see Dennis Schroeder in New York. You're gonna yeah. have to pay for him, but I could definitely see Dennis in New York. Yeah. And the and the Knicks, what you know, let's just say something quick about the Knicks, man. 
hey, I think they back on track. They got to add a few pieces. They made it to the yep. playoffs. I, 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 I just, you know, I, I think they got a good thing going. They just got to add some, a few more pieces, man. But they had a good season, even you know, they, yep. they flamed out against the Hawks in the playoffs. But for a Nick team that ain't been in the playoffs for a while, and, and you know, get back in there, that's a mm-hmm. starting point, man. You know, yeah, more firepower. They just need yep. more firepower. Let's see. Uh, you think um, old LeBron gonna be around when Bronny gets drafted in a few years? I don't know. I don't know. I did see Bronny though, man. Bronny looked like a monster now, man. He ain't the little cute kid no more, man. He like six five, six six, and he yeah. done his. He got a. He got the thick neck with the big shoulders now, and I'm like, yo, that look like a man now. He don't look like a boy no more. So. Um, but I don't know. I don't know if he will stay. I don't know if he will stay around that long. If his game doesn't have a significant drop off, maybe. But if LeBron has a significant drop off in his game, he'd be the first to walk away. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, that's the biggest thing I see about him, man. I don't know if I can visualize LeBron coming off the bench and not being a starter. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I just I can't see that. I can't see that. I, I can't see that. So I think, I think yeah. if LeBron can't be one of the top guys on the floor. I don't think LeBron gonna be. A, I, I don't think he'll be willing to take that sacrifice. No. The and the good thing, time get all of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. And I'll just that's what I was about to bring up. The good thing about it is LeBron has aged gracefully because he's continued to develop his game. If yeah. he hasn't developed his game, he's out the league by now. You know, yeah. yeah, but he's he he went and got him a three a three point shot. Um, he went and got some post moves. Um, he's 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 done all the analytical stuff. I noticed. Um, I remember one year. I think it was the twenty eighteen season when the, that cat that year he took the Cavs to the finals and lost to Golden State, and that's the year that they pretty much traded everybody at the trade deadline and uh, brought in a whole new team. He still took them to the finals. That year, uh, they talked about um, him walking, and so they say on the court, he um, he noticed that um, the more he the walking more because he knows he's going to put the miles on his body. So during games, he will walk as much as possible instead of running up the court, and that has put they say it's put time it put years on the back end of his career by walking more up the court when he can, of course. Yeah, but you know what, man. I, what so what's the day is is june is july the 8th 9th yeah july the 8th 2021 july the 8th uh, what, what ben simmons doing right now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is he doing <laughs> watching a hey, watching he watching huh? watch, watching shows and them talking about him getting traded that's what he's doing yeah i bet he ain't in the gym working on that jump shot either though Probably not. Yeah, it, that, 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 that's still amazing. It's a, he's eligible for the draft in four years. That's a long time, man. That's a long time. Yeah, that, that is. Boy, LeBron that's, to be what, 40? Yeah, mm. like a little over 40. Yeah, because he's 36 that? now. Yeah, Tom so, yeah. Can do it. Maybe LeBron can do it. <laughs> Maybe. Hey, and I, speaking of which, before we get to the Jaguars, um, I see. Did you see Tom Brady saying that? You know, he says he's not going to play forever. He does see the end coming. Oh, you think? You you think, Tom? You finally ready to, to admit that? You know, you're not going to play forever because that was his. I think that's part of what kept him going. I want to play the forty. I want to play the forty. Then he got the forty. He said, "I want to play the forty-five. I want to play the forty-five. Now that he's forty-three, about to be forty-four, it was I'm going to play the fifty. But now it's yeah, the end might be closer than I think. Of course, it is. The number one game I want to see this upcoming season is Tampa Bay and the Patriots. <laughs> oh, yeah. I do want to see that. Well, yeah, you can I, I do. Tom Brady daddy was talking about that the day the schedule came out. What? Oh, I didn't even hear that. Yeah, he was talking about that game. So, yeah, I got to mark that on my calendar. All the family be there in New England for that one. <laughs> wow. Man, stop hating. He got your son six championships. Don't hate. Hey, 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 hey. Um, what's the, the movie Fences with um Denzel Washington? 
and him and his son get in the argument and he said his son said something about uh well well you never liked me he's like like you who said i had to like you i fed and clothed you nobody said anything about having to like you hey he got uh, he got brady six rings he didn't have to like brady uh belichick didn't have to like brady that's what this is about that's that's this is about oh yeah Hey, who knows, man? The Patriots might be back. Yeah, as long as the team can keep Brady upright, he gonna play. Yeah, yeah, he, he he's gonna play as long as he can stay upright. So, perfect time to segue into a little bit of Jags talk. So, let's talk about these. Uh, hold on, what what you had brought up first? Because I know I want to talk about the fine that they got. You had brought up something else. Uh, the fine, the, um, the um, contract with um, Trevor Lawrence contract. Oh yes, I did see um his contract with thirty six point eight um fully guaranteed with a fifth year option, four year deal with the fifth year option. When I saw that deal, I, I automatically I said that they have to build, and I mean do work overtime to build because this is the cheapest you're ever going to get Trevor Lawrence. You're not going to get him this cheap anymore. So you need to take advantage of having him cheap. That's what the Chiefs did. The Chiefs had Patrick Mahomes cheap. They built around him. You have to build around Trevor. Just like um, uh, the the Chargers right now. They got Justin Herbert. You better build around him. The Ravens have built around Lamar. They about to have to pay him now, but they built around him. So Josh Allen, same thing in Buffalo. They built around him when they were their cheapest. So they need to continue to build around Trevor Lawrence because you won't have him this cheap ever again. Exactly right. Can't say it any better than that, man. But, you know, his whole contract is guaranteed, and he's yeah. got $24, $24 million signing, signing bonus that's in his pocket today. Money. And he's making um, 660000 base salary for this upcoming season. So they got him cheap. Yeah, they do. They got them real cheap. They got them real cheap, man. So, um, so now, what about these fines? Um, because uh, it wasn't just Jacksonville. I think the 49ers and like two or three other teams, I think the Dolphins got hit with the fines, and they said they violated the no contact rules because they have to send in the tapings of the practice to the league. Yeah, but you know, there's rumor that somebody told the league and the league sent the representative down on that june the first practice i i I don't know if that's true or not but um the rumor has it that the wide receivers going against the um defensive backs in a drill in the drills that day kind of got out of hand a little bit media wasn't there so I, I, i can't give any details of exactly what happened but from the rumor mill, I mean, not so much from a rumor, from a source said that uh, the defensive, I mean, there were some guys hitting the ground, you know, I guess some press coverage or whatever was going on, and it kind of got a little carried away there. A couple guys hit hit the ground. But I say this, I think out of, you know, when you have OTAs and you have mini camp, I mean, your, your best, most competitive matchup, obviously it's going to be the wide receivers going against the defensive back because, you know, basically yeah. you pretty much can show what you, you know, you don't need pass to show if you can cover and you don't need mm-hmm. pass to show if you can catch. <laughs> yeah. So there was, even for the open practices with the media, there was some, um, you know, particularly that bad, one of the bad practices that uh, Trevor had where it, you know, I think on that day he had two pick six, and I think Garner got picked off twice. So they picked off four, <laughs> four passes in that practice. And man, those guys was dancing before practice, and they got a little heated. You know, I, mm-hmm. I, I can remember Joe Schobert after that practice talking about, well, the offense. You know, they they kind of know we came we, we, we came for business today or something. So you're gonna hear some smack talk between the offense. Yeah. Than the other time, but you know, I, I you know, I, I think the the big scope of this is, and what the people, you know, especially the national media are saying that, you know, that Urban right now is out of control. He doesn't follow the rules. Hmm. Uh, you know, he he doesn't know what he's doing. You know, it's like this. I, I say this. I, I say Urban Meyer. 
and it ain't just now. It's going to be the whole season. I don't think any coach in the NFL is going to have a bigger bullseye than than Urban Meyer. <laughs> I, the seat is hot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it's I coming think, from the outside, not the inside. But yeah. No, you're right. It's not coming nowhere from the Jacksonville, but I think the coaches – I don't think a lot of coaches in the NFL right now don't like him. I think the national, I mean, I think he's done burned some bridges. Uh, media has burned some bridges with him. That um, there's a lot of big time national reporters that cover college don't like him. And, yeah. and I think there's a lot of people outside of Jacksonville don't want him to be successful. And then when you have, you know, the, the Chris Dole situation, and now you have, well, man, he's not following the rules, you know. The $100,000 fine, the, the franchise get fined $200,000, and um, it's, it's, it's going to be an interesting season, man. You know, I, I'll yeah. say this about Urban Meyer, man. I don't think he's a coach that listens much out. I, I, he don't listen to chatter. No. I, I think these guys are going to be in for a training camp that they ain't never seen before in their life. I, I think that's going to be. <laughs> yeah. I said this early this week, man. Josh Lambeau probably got every kicking record in in, in, in Jaguars history. <laughs> yeah. Got like 96% on kick since he's been there in 217. And we yeah. were out there watching that practice. It was like the final mini camp practice. And he 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 blew the whistle, stopped everything. All the guys, they 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 just standing with their hands on the shoulder. And he signals the Josh to come out there. And, and this is this is live, and this is competition. You can hear him shouting that. And, and then he, you know, he said, "You, we want you to make this like make this kick." So Josh go in first, make a forty yarder. It don't even look like he. It didn't even phase him. And then yeah. he had Rosas come out. They put the ball in the same spot, and Rosas make it. So we thinking like, well, man, you know, both of them make it. So they go back to eleven on eleven drills. Nope, move the ball back. With the, he, he he tells the, the guy pushed it back five yards. <laughs> put it in the <laughs> put it in the right hash mark, and right. Then Josh to come back out there and make the kick at forty five. And this went on for like about 10 minutes. They went all the way to about 48 yards. And then he had the nerve to say two days before that practice, you know, it's nothing about winning and losing right now. And then, he, then we asked, we asked well, Coach said nothing about winning and losing, but you got a bona fide kicking contest. Guy. Competition, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. said, well, you know, there's some 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 things, you know, you I, I want to see who, who we got, who, who's the best kicker. So yeah. if that's an example of what training camp going to be, where well, he don't care if you was here 10 years, he don't care if you got records, he don't yeah. care if you rushed for 1,000 yards, he don't care if you had 900 yards receiving and 16 touchdowns, everything going to be competition and ain't nobody got no in line on a starting spot, which is good, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, it is good. And like you said, the, the Urban hasn't made any friends with the way he's left Florida and the way he's left Ohio State. The stuff, you know, the stories behind it, how much he actually knew, how much he didn't know, you know, because even though that he had the um, the guy on his staff in Florida who had domestic violence against his wife and then um, um, at the same uh, at Ohio State, which is which led to his ousting at Ohio State, is something that came back to bite him. That came from Florida. Mm -hmm. um, even with those things said, I mean, he's he's he, like I said, he's burned some bridges and he made some enemies. And that press conference he held after the story blew up, yeah. and it was awful. It was yeah. it was absolutely awful. Wow. That was one. It was his probably his worst press conference in his entire coaching career. Yeah. Something that he could have he could have left that to a memo statement or something or or just gave him coach speak, but that was awful. So yeah. he he's made no friends with stuff like that, but it doesn't matter, and none of that matters. None of that matters today. That's the past. That's the past. All that matters is what's going forward, and what's going forward is him and Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, yeah. Just getting the ball in the in the getting quicker speed on defense. Hopefully the defense can stop the run. Yeah. 
It's a Jakar say, I think walk a little going to push Cam out and we both are up on that right side. Trev going to have all day. I've been hearing good things about Walker Little, man. I have. Yeah, me too. His offensive line coach says out of all the players he coached, he thinks that uh, Walker Little just developed, you know, got good tape technique and probably more advanced than any any draft pick, first or second round draft pick he ever coached, which is yeah. which is good, you know. And he's big. I'm not a believer of, of, of Cam Robinson. I just I, I don't know. I mean I I think that um, I think that they went about it. They didn't they didn't want to pay twenty six million dollars to bring in a new left tackle. And yeah. I just think they put a band aid sort of sort of on on a problem. I just I, I think my biggest question about the Jaguars with two three with three weeks to go before training camp. I, I'm not, I'm not certain on the offensive line. I mean, I'm not certain about Jawan. I'm not certain about Cam. I think they great run blockers, but I just, I don't know, man. I, 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 I don't know if you can clean up some of the issues that they've had over the last two years on their pass blocking. And um, you know, this kid come in, walk a little. He's gonna push probably both of them. And um, yeah. will he start opening week? No, but I wouldn't be shocked if Walker Little replaced one of them, you know, probably more Cam than Jawan by midseason. You got to you gotta protect your investment, man. <laughs> yeah, you do. As, as much as we talked about Urban Meyer, Urban Meyer don't have any friendship with any of those players. If, 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 if somebody can help him win or, or – or somebody does a better job protecting the, the franchise quarterback, he gonna do it. He'll pull them in a minute. And I think, yep. you know, it might be some slippage. I mean, it, we're not gonna wait three games and see Cam Robinson give up five sacks or four sacks and not see a change being made, you know. Yeah. So my only yep. issue with them is I just don't think they got a they got enough depth on the line. You know, I don't think they have enough. You know, injuries can happen at any time, and I, who knows how Andrew Norwell is going to play? I, I don't know. I think he's. I think he had a great season last year, but you know, yeah. I, in two eighteen, he didn't have a good season. So, you know, yeah. I don't know. So, Jakar say, is Can really that much of a liability? AJ Can? No, I don't think he's a liability. I just think that he has. I think there's certain snaps of certain games where he just you don't see it, you know. You know, I mean, I can go back to the Tennessee game where he, you know, it took him his drop back to get in the pass. You know, he 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 dropping back to get in to get in his stance. Yeah, and real slow about it. His technique. He's stepping off the wrong foot, and you. I mean, you got to be on top of your game for every snap, particularly if you with this quarterback, you know. Yeah. You don't need to have him forcing the run or somebody got to shout <laughs> so he can watch out for the rush coming on the from that side. And I just yeah. think Cam, Cam has slippage in his footwork technique on pass blocking, and, and sometimes his hands is too low. And his stance is not right. It just, it just, you know, just not flaws every snap. But there's snaps where, what is he doing? <laughs> you know, yeah, he can't get, he can't get the turn quick enough to get in front of the guy. And you know, the one thing about football, man, it, you know, you don't, the the tape shows everything. I mean, you watch those yeah. games and you see, you show the replay. And then they turn around and say, man, you know, the same mistake he made on giving up that sack is the same mistake he made three weeks ago, you know? And when mm -hmm. you don't improve, it just, you know, you, you gotta you you gotta hone to your craft. Sometimes I think that Cam Cam has football has been easy for him. He's 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 always been one of the biggest guys on the field. You know, he was a great offensive lineman at Alabama, but 
and, and he was a great offensive lineman his rookie season for the Jaguars. But you can't. This is the, you can't rest on your laurel in, in this league. You you everybody is watching you on film. Everybody see your strength. Everybody see your weakness. Some guys come inside on you. Some guys come outside on you. And you know why they do that? Because they 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 taking advantage of what your disadvantage is. You know, if you're yeah. not strong enough or quick enough to get in your stance to stop an inside rush, then that's the way they're going to go. And if your footwork not not right and you trying to get in your stand to seal off that 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 edge and you slow dropping back, what do you think they're going to do? <laughs> right. You know, and those yeah. are the things that, you know, you have to work on your craft. It's just like Ben Simmons, man. You know, football and basketball, I know it's professional, but that's why you're a professional, man. You you yeah. got to use your all-season time to work on any flaw that you have in your game because you if you don't, you're going to get exposed. And I just think he's been exposed for a long time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Pete Prisco said something, um, said something about Cam after his rookie season. And uh, he, I think he was talking to Baselli and talking to somebody else, can't remember, but they was on the radio. And he was saying, um, he said, Well, what he said, what are y'all gonna do about left tackle? I said, Because that's that's a problem for y'all. And uh, Tony Baselli, of course, he was stunned, Oh, no, Cam will be fine, Cam will be this. And Pete Briscoe's like, No, no, no. Y'all need to figure that out because that's going to be a problem going forward. And Pete Prisco was right. You know, I just thought he was hating. You know, I just thought Prisco was being a hater like he usually is sometimes because they, they be killing him on Twitter. He's a bit of a hater. But yeah. he was right about that. I got to give him his props when props are due, man. But he was completely right about that. Let's see. Jakar says, who is in our final wide receiver room? Hmm. So who? what wide receivers are going to start the season? Well, that's going to be the most competitive spot on the roster. It's the best yeah. position on the roster. I think you got to start with Marvin Jones. I know a lot of people love DJ Chark. I don't think DJ is the number one receiver on this team this year. I think it's Marvin Jones. I just think that, you know, he's he knows this offense from Detroit. He, he worked with Bevel in Detroit when, when Bevel was the offensive coordinator. The guy is smart. I mean, you watch him on the practice field, you know, the things that he does to get separation. It ain't all about speed. It's positioning. He can get off mm -hmm. the bump real quick. He runs his routes great. He doesn't drop passes. I, I just think that all that experience that he has, and you're looking at a guy that, that had nine TEs, I think, over the last three to three, three the last years. Months. Yeah. And, um, I think he knows his crap. I think obviously DJ Chalk is in that room and probably the you know, no question he's up there in talent and probably the number two guy in talent. I think that um I like LaVisca. I mean I, I, I really you know, I know that's been all the hype this this spring and all season, but man, I tell you, I think that he's improved, you know, and I mean he's faster, he's bigger, I mean he's he, he his route running is better. I think that um, I would like to even see him run some. I, I like to see him play outside a little more and just be a slot receiver. You know, yeah. I think I think he came in 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 the um, in the off season program. I think the only thing that my question about him is can, can he stay? You know, can he avoid injury? But yeah. out of all the receivers, I thought I thought he made the biggest jump. From what, from what he did last season, to what he showed this spring, you know, just everything about his game looked like he elevated it. You know, he even looks faster. You know, yeah. after that, uh, you know, I like Cullen Johnson. <laughs> oh yeah, I like Philip Dorsett. I like his speed. I think he's got to catch. I saw too many drops in in the um, in the eleven on elevens and the seven on sevens where he got separation and couldn't come down with the pass so i think that was a problem in seattle too so but definitely i like his speed i think they got to utilize Cullen johnson a little i think they got to utilize him a little more i think i think you got to yeah. take advantage of of the height that he has but he also has speed i yeah. think there's going to be some situations where they will 
go without a tight end. And I think you also got to factor in um, Travis at the end. I mean, I think it's legitimate. I think he's going to be playing receiver. I think yeah. he's definitely going to be at running back, but I definitely think that um, he's going to be on the field with, um, with, with Johnson, yeah. you know? So those are the guys that stand out to me. I mean, I like the rookie. I can't think of his name right now, the kid that they drafted in the sixth round. Uh, I think, I think he showed something, but I don't think, I don't think he immediately going to be in that rotation, but I do think they got to get Colin Johnson more involved. Yeah. I seen some, um, an article, um, with NFL network or NFL.com and was an alert article, whatever, but they were talking about Colin Johnson and him taking a step forward and making a impact next year. So basically kind of like a breakout player to watch. And I think so too, because in the short, short amount of time we saw him, I mean, he flashed some serious talent, Yeah, you know, to be six, six, to be able to move like that. I mean, yeah, like one of the backgrounds that I had um, on my computer for the longest, and I used this uh, the cover photo after their first game was him doing a backflip at six six, like <laughs> standing. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, the dude is incredibly um, athletic. So, but yeah, I like that wide receiver room. I think it's much improved from last year. We won't lead. We shouldn't lead the league in drops. I no. know that much. No, and, and I like the, you know, they're not showing everything as far as how they're going to operate the offense. But I can guarantee you there won't be a whole lot of slants inside. <laughs> mm-hmm. They're going down the field. I think they're going downfield. They're going to go over the top of the defense. And they're also going to put a guy like Etienne in space. You know, they're going to try yes. to give him like a 10 yard, get him open in space and let, let him break free and break open and try to break a long one. But I think you're going to see a lot. And, you know, you got Trevor Lawrence, so you – the one thing I like about Trevor is, you know, the one thing he has that I haven't seen since I've been covering the team is that he can lead the receiver with a pass, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I know how simple that sounds, but when you lead the receiver with the pass, the only guy can catch the pass is the receiver, not not the defensive back. <laughs> right. And then right. throwing on the, you know, throwing, making curl routes on the outside instead of everything coming in inside, like with, you know, a lot of the outside, and then just letting those guys take advantage of their athleticism to get open or, or beat the coverage and things like that. So I think you're going to see a lot more big play opportunity because of the of the play calling. Yeah, he's going to be um, incredibly aggressive, Urban Meyer. I don't yeah. think that, that that him the way he is um, with Schottenheimer and Bevel, um, I don't think that they're going to keep the training wheels on very long. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. They won't. I don't for that, man. I, <laughs> yeah, I think I think these guys are going in. You know, this this. I don't think they're thinking about coming off one in fifteen. I don't. I think the over and under. I think it's six wins. I think these guys going at it like, man, we're going to win as many as we can. We can get eight wins, we can get eight. If we can get nine wins, we can get nine. But we going all out. We ain't got nothing to hold back. We we yeah. ain't, ain't, ain't no pressure on us. You know, yep. nobody expect us to do anything anyway. Nope. And I think they're just going to go all out on offense. I, I, I don't think they're going to have a problem offensively. My only question is, is their defense. I mean, do they have enough on the defensive front? to really go after the quarterback and can a guy like Caleb Vaughn chase on really, you know, maximize his, his athletic ability and be an edge rusher by playing an outside linebacker, which is a natural position for him because that's what he played at LSU and see, you know, did, did Josh Allen have slippage or did, uh, or, or did the injury matter or did, or is he good as he yeah. was as a rookie, you know, but, I, you know, I think the defensive front, I think, you know, Robinson Harris, Malcolm Brown, um, Dewan Smoot, the guys like that, Taven Bryan, those are the guys that's going to determine how well this defense is. Because I think on the back end, I don't think there's no question that they got a better secondary, you know. Whether CJ, oh, yeah. yeah. Whether CJ Henderson is back, I think if he, if he ain't in the right frame, 
a mine or whatever. They got Tyson Campbell, and then you just you you know I, I don't think it's an issue on the other side, and yeah. I think Sha I mean Shaquille Griffin is a is an upgrade, and yes. uh, I, I think and I like Rayshon Jenkins at that safety spot, and the kid from Syracuse. I I think a yeah, and he's on the start. So. That's my guy right there, and if Jakari's still watching, Jakari sent me his highlight yeah. months ago. And he yeah. was like, yo, check this kid out, Andre Cisco from Syracuse. And yeah. I, I fell in love with him after that highlight. And I told him, I said, he reminds me of Jalen Ramsey. A little more ball skills, though. Yeah. You know, Jalen doesn't have excellent ball skills, you know, but Andre Cisco has excellent ball skills. He got notes for the football. Yeah. And so, yeah, the quicker that kid get on the field, that's my guy to watch right there, man. Yeah. So he just got to get fully recovered. He didn't do much in the spring and, um, all season program, but man, you watch those highlights for this guy always around the ball, and that's yes. an upgrade, you know. So, I I don't I don't see no concern about their back end. I do have a little concern about the middle linebacker situation. I don't know if Schobert is the is the guy to be in that defensive scheme, and they're gonna give him his contract. So, so you know, I mean, you you can't bench a guy with the contract that he has. But they brought in Damian Wilson, and we'll see who the best men win in training camp for that middle linebacker spot. But, you know, Miles Jack, to me, is probably the the best guy on the field deep defensively for this team. I, I don't see that changing. And um, I just – I think that I think they got the whole field. I just think that um, my biggest question is going to be the defensive front. Can they, can they plug the holes? Can they stop the run? Can they get – more than 18 sacks which they got to get more than 18 sacks but i think this i think joe cullen is a good defensive coordinator i think they're going to show different looks i i I don't think they're going to be set in one scheme like um like the previous defensive coordinator i I think i think he's going to utilize he's going to fit his scheme around the talent and he'll make adjustments as they go along and i think that um he's a better guy putting him in a position to win than, yeah, um, yeah. than last season. Yeah, I remember, yeah, I remember when he was here last, last time. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. With the Rushman. Yeah. yeah. He, didn't he didn't have a good have group. group. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this group is better. Yeah, Jack so. taking it on the chin for some years, man. <laughs> man, don't remind me, man. Don't remind me. <laughs> don't. Hey, it's our, home team. it's our hometown team, man. It's the only one we got. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? You know what I'm amazed about in this episode right here? Because this was an excellent episode, Mr. Reed. But you know mm-hmm. what I'm amazed by? And I'm going to do it because I got to do it I'm because I'm a glut for punishment. Nobody brought up Taven Bryan. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Nobody brought up. Hey. Jakar didn't do it. You didn't do it. I didn't do it. Nobody brought up Taven Bryan. That's yeah, good. I'll, That's I'll good. bring them up instinctive. You got to be instinctive to play. <laughs> you can't you can't show oh. up on the tape that you can bull rush a guy, and then you have the running back run right on the side of you, and you don't make any attempt to tackle. That's just like a wrestler who can't jump off the rope and, and land on the guy. He jump off the rope and hit the bottom without touching the guy. That's basically what it is. So that's, that's my basically table. what it is. That's my table and take for the for this week. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna end it right there. We're gonna put a pin in and end it right there, man. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Hey, I'll be back. Um, maybe back this week. I don't know because I just got a message from uh um uh, Harrison who was commenting earlier about Shikari. He's in my he he wanted to get on another episode. So I said me and him we might do an episode together. I don't know yet, but we'll see. Uh, but man, I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Hey, follow Mr. Reed on Twitter, on Facebook, um, Jacksonville.com for the Florida Times Union, man. Check us out. Uh, we will be back again next week um, with more sports stories. I think uh, we, do we have an NBA champion by next Thursday? I don't think so. Well, I don't we think we'll have a champion. Maybe a four game sweep. <laughs> if, it, if it's a four game sweep, we'll have a champion. So we'll Man. we'll have a lot. Regardless, we'll have lots to talk about. Let me squeeze um, this in week. before uh, Suns by ten tonight. 
<laughs> Suns by 10. I like it. I like it. Suns by 10 tonight. I like it because they're in Phoenix. So yeah. Suns by 10 tonight. Yeah, Milwaukee's not gonna wake up till they go back home anyway. I don't I don't see it. If they if they win tonight, Chris Middleton has to be Batman tonight. If they want to win tonight. <laughs> Yeah, Chris yeah. Paul. Say, I'm, I'm I'm Batman and Superman. <laughs> yeah, oh man, yes, for sure. So, all right, man. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Like I said, like, share, and subscribe, and we are out of here. Peace out, y'all. <laughs>